Hey guys, I'm Glenn, and my backyard could sure use a little TLC. And with such a busy schedule, it's a challenge staying on top of everything. But the good thing is you'll get to see me transform my entire backyard over time. We gotta start somewhere, so let's start with a concrete bench, and I'm hoping that that can set the tone in the backyard. And big thanks to Wrangler Rigs Workwear for sponsoring this video. And for the next couple weeks, I will be testing out their cool vintage jeans. And I'll let you know what my thoughts are on that. Now, if you've been around for quite some time, you know we actually teamed up in the past to create a modern doghouse, which is one of the best looking thing in my backyard. And I'm still proud of that build. So I know the durability and the comfort their product provide. And before we dive into the video, I'm gonna give you a list of things that I use to make this bench so you can make one for yourself. So here's what you'll need to pick up. One three quarter inch sheet of melamine. You'll also need some two by eights and one two by 12. 80 pound bags of concrete, three of those, a couple corner brackets, you'd also need some deck screws and some tap cons. And don't forget the rebar to add some strength to your form. And for less than $100, you too can have an awesome bench like this hanging around in your backyard. To make the melamine more manageable, I first cut it down with my circular saw, then I took it over to the table saw where I can make the finer cuts. I cut all the larger pieces first, then the smaller ones. And since I'm making two of these, I need to duplicate every cut. Now of course you can use a circular saw to make all the cuts, but using a table saw is much more efficient and it speeds up the process. Now after all the parts were cut and I just wanted to double check and confirm that everything was here, I set it up quickly just to get a view of it and what it would look like. Since I'm using melamine, this stuff is really easy to split, so you want to make sure you pre-drill your hole before you install the screws. After analyzing the form and figuring out the best way to be able to disassemble the form, I use one and a half inch screws to secure everything together. The goal is to make sure that it's easy to come apart, but you know, if you run into any issues, it's pretty cheap, so you can always destroy a piece or two to remove it. Now with majority of the form already assembled, I'm gonna now attach the sides to the back. And if you notice, I'm putting all the screws along the side. I don't wanna do it from the bottom because this way I will have to lift the form and work from the bottom. Now I can just remove the screws along the side and pull the form away. Now I decided to add these smaller pieces here and the purpose of them is to keep the box from swaying in the middle section. I also added tape along the open end on the melamine and this is to prevent the cement from getting stuck to it and making it tough to come out. So this is what the boxes should look like and once you're done you should have a total of two of these identical boxes. Now before jumping into the next stage I want to wipe out the box using a wet rag and this is to remove any loose dust. I'm going to then take a caulking gun and then caulk all the corners. Now this way I can close up all the gaps and have a round over edge on the concrete legs. Now although you can use your fingers, I prefer to use this spreader, you will get a professional bead of caulking every time and each corner has a different size of spread on it. Allow the caulking to dry and then we can move on to the next step. For reinforcement, I'm going to use 3 8 rebar which you can find in 2 feet section at your local hardware store. And with a few bags of concrete on hand, I was hoping I had enough for this project. Project only took just over 2.5 bags so 3 bags should do the trick. You'd more likely want to use a wheelbarrow or you can also use a mixing bin like this one here. Just apply a good amount of water until you get a good mix and you just want to make sure you turn over every piece so that everything is wet. The mix came out a bit wetter than I hoped for and I didn't really notice until I started pouring the concrete into the form. But at this point I wasn't planning on pouring it back and adding more mix to it so I'm just going to proceed. Now this seems to be about the halfway point so I'm going to take the rebars and sit them in the mix and then mix another layer of mix and then add it on top. Being that we are at the halfway mark this is probably a good time to vibrate the form just to get some of the air pockets out. And after the second layer of mix was added I'm going to take my reciprocating saw and vibrate the perimeter of the form. Now do the same thing for the other form and then we'll be on to the next step. Now after letting the form sit for about a week or so, I can now remove the form around the concrete and it is now ready for handling. With the screws removed at the bottom, I can gently remove the form from around the concrete. 
I removed the top part on the form and the remainder of it was pretty easy to come off the back just pretty much slid right off the middle part came out pretty easy as well but the second form I had a little more of a headache so I was able to drill out this section here what I have in my hand and then remove it but everything else came apart just fine so as I'm pointing to the gap here between the wood and the concrete which is good because it allowed for the wood to expand when temperature change and I'll counter that gap by using a piece of wood going the opposite grain direction and sit that in a slot and I can make that super tight. I am now at the opposite end which I'm going to take a small piece of wood place that on the inside and mark the inside of that this way I know where to cut the wood that piece of wood will sit on the outside hot in the end grain. To make the bench a little more pleasant to the touch, I'm gonna sand a few of the corners and some of the surface down so it's a bit more smoother. But of course, doing this will remove some of the cement layer and also expose some of the rocks. But I can totally live with this, being that it's an outdoor bench. Now you can always resurface it, touching up the spots that actually need it, hiding the rocks and just making it smoother and a bit more professional. And at this point, I'm gonna apply concrete sealer. This one leave a bit of a wet look to it I applied four coats on it and basically what this does is add a layer of protection and it also makes the concrete waterproof. Before adding the sealer you want to make sure that the surface is clean and free of dust. I use a shop vac to do that prior to adding a sealer. The lumber I'm using here is Southern Yellow Pine and I'm going to run over it using a 150 grit sandpaper. This should kind of remove all the rough ends. For the smaller boards which will be the seat, I'm going to round those over with a round over bit on the router. I'll sand these down as well and I'll repeat the same process for the remaining six. I also ripped another piece of yellow pine which will act as support underneath the bench. All the screws I'm using in this project, they're all outdoor rated. They're mainly used for decks and outdoor projects and I did not want to use regular screws because over time those will rust. With the lumber just sitting on the concrete, I'm going to take a piece of string and tie it around both legs. And I want to make sure that the legs are straight and parallel with each other because now I'm going to use this string as a guideline for adding the individual piece of lumber. So the plan here is to sit the individual lumber in between the string, allowing the lumber to barely touch the strings and this should keep all your boards lined up. The two lumber on the outermost of the bench, these pieces will never be glued because those need to stay removable. For the remainder of the board we can add wood glue and now I'm going to take clamps to clamp those into place, slide under the bench and attach a few screws from the bottom. And once the first one is done you can then take a piece of 3 quarter inch board of any sort and place it between each using that as your spacer. Now as I stated the two outer boards will never be glued and that's because that needs to be removable. I'm now going to attach a small piece of lumber on the outside of each lumber that sits on the outer side of the bench. This piece of lumber will continue the lumber of the seat all the way to the end and it will also cover the screws below. I added a total of three screws, two on the outside and one in the middle. So the way I plan to attach the wood to the concrete will be two method. This is part one. This will be Tapcon going through the wood and down into the concrete and I'll be using four inch Tapcons. And these are the screws that will be covered by the top part of the seat. Now I won't install them just yet because I need to move the bench and that would just make it a whole lot lighter if I can move the bench in individual pieces. And this part of the seat will be installed like the others only without glue. I'm going to countersink the holes on this piece of lumber just to give it a clean look and this piece will be used to add the end grains of the other boards that meets it. I'm now going to apply a couple layers of Minwax urethane and this should provide protection to the lumber preventing water from penetrating and it's also UV rated. And for longevity of the lumber it's best to cover both the top and the bottom. Now you can apply this with a roller 
or also a foam brush but I'm using a polyurethane brush which is made for this and it's easy to wash out I've been using it for quite some time now basically when I'm done with it I just put it in some mineral spirit wash it out put it up and it'll be ready for me the next time I get ready to use it now I used to leave my brushes in plastic bags and containers and simply because I usually forget them but after a while you do that enough and it start adding up So I was hoping that I could put this bench together today, but you know, I'm down in Florida and it don't rain as much here, but today just happened to be one of those rainy days and I'm unable to finish putting this together and the rain kind of eased up right now. So I'm gonna show you guys how I plan to finish this off and you have an idea on where my vision was going, but it's pretty simple from here on out. Now, as I previously showed you the way I'm gonna attach it from the top and I'll show you again, I'm gonna also attach it from the bottom using this corner bracket and basically, these few holes up top is gonna go into the wood and then right at the bottom, I'm only gonna use the outer two holes. Now at this very moment, I don't know where I'm gonna put it. Once I find that location, then I can settle on putting this down. But for now, I'm just gonna show you guys the way that I'm planning to put it together so that you have an idea on how the end results will look. And you'll see this in a future video as well when I make some fire pits and some other things outside. The holes on the ends are the ones I'm going to use to attach the wood to the bench. But currently I'm going to drill a new one in the middle as a way to keep the bench together temporarily so that no one knocks it over. I can then take the removable part of the bench, sit that into place, attach it from the bottom, take the outside piece that cover the end grains, screw that into place and that's pretty much it. Now I haven't quite picked the perfect location in the backyard just yet, but when I do, I'll be sure to give you guys an update. If this is the first time by the channel, be sure to subscribe for more awesome do-it-yourself projects. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators, and I'll see you guys next time.